Natalie Foster. Yes. You finally found a clever man. I know. There's not many around, but here's one. This is Jared. Now, He's gorgeous. Jared is a beautiful boy. He was actually rescued from a local pound um, and was brought in here when the guy who rescued him actually had to uh, change accommodation. So he moved into a rental home, couldn't take Jared with him. Yep. He's about a year old. He's a red heel across Kilpie, which means in one word, energetic. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the energy is just <laughs> frolicking out, out of the end of that leash. <laughs> hey, what's he spotted? He's spotted another dog. Another dog. He can be a little bit reactive around other dogs. Yep. Um, but, you know, obviously if, if it was the right dog, I'm sure they'd get on just fine. Yep. He's not suitable for kids, and you've probably seen why, Richard, he does jump up very high. Yep. He can jump head high. So it's not because he's aggressive? No, he's not aggressive. He hasn't got an aggressive bone in his body, have you? No! Um, it's not because he's aggressive, he's just too full on for little kids. Okay. So probably teenagers you'd be okay, like yep. older kids, and especially dog oriented kids that have been around big, boisterous dogs. Um, he's just high energy. So ideally, you'd want to burn most of that energy off because otherwise he could do some damage inside your house. Okay. Now, don't be fooled into thinking if you've got a big backyard or a property, that's going to be enough for Jared because it's really not. It's not enough for any dog. They need to go outside. They need to go walking. They need to run around at the park and be a dog. Um, so many dogs come in here and they've spent most of their life in the backyard and they're not socialised well. So, and this is obviously what's happened with Jared because he's not that great around other dogs. Not. Um, not he doesn't attack other dogs he just doesn't particularly want much to do with them sure so um, he needs a an owner who's had some dealings with working breeds yeah because they are a breed unto themselves you have to be prepared to do the work you have so, to be prepared to do the training so when you're talking about doing the work mm. tell us what, what what is a typical day for Jared okay you would you'd have to take him out twice a day okay um, if time permits, I would suggest to you that you'd have to take him out for a run. That doesn't mean you have to run, but it basically means taking the ball out to the park, yep. throwing it around for a good 30, 40 minutes, just run some of that energy off. Go, go home, then you go off to work if you can't take him with you, leave him in the backyard with things to do to keep his mind active, because working dogs are smart dogs. Now, you're, you're quite right, working dogs are smart. Mm -hmm. He's got two of the cleverest breeds. Yes. Possibly in Australia. Yes. What does that mean for an owner? I mean, a smart well, dog, what have they got to do to keep that dog stimulated? Well, the thing is, smart dogs are actually harder to look after than, than stupid dogs because stupid dogs will just sit on the bed and chew a bone. Yeah. These guys won't. They need to be mentally stimulated. So, you need activities outside set up for him. You'll need cons. You'll need balls with treats inside. Um, you'll need to, you can actually go around and hide things in the backyard. What I do with one of my dogs, one of my dogs is a shepherd, and I'll actually sprinkle food, I'll hide food around the backyard, and then it takes her a bit of time to actually go around and find all that food. So keeping the brain ticking over, yep. they won't do well just left in the backyard with a ball. You know, a ball's not much fun unless there's somebody throwing it. So um, you just have to keep that mind active. Ideally, he'd do great with agility. Okay. If, if you do dog training, he'll need to do the basic dog training. Yep. And then go on from there. He'd be a fantastic agility dog. And because he is such a clever, high energy dog, training's got to be a must, yes. right? Yes, yeah, without a doubt. Tell us why training for a dog like this is so important. I mean, for, we've, we've done the mental aspect. He's a clever dog, needs a stimulation. Yep. But from a physical perspective, what happens to a dog like this if they don't get training? Okay, if they don't get training, they they're, they're basically turn themselves inside out. Um, and we've seen it in kennels here when they're bored, where they've got nothing to do. You can see here that he is on the very slim side. Yep. Now, he's put on a couple of kilos since he's been here. Um, that's after being fed three times a day. They'll be basically banging around in the backyard. They'll destroy your backyard if you've got any uh, reticulation for him. That's why we say you really have because if they've got, at least if you get their body worn out, then the brain sort of, <laughs> you know, it kind of keeps up with the body. Yep, yep. So you'd need to take them out for a, for a run in the morning and then let them have a more leisurely run and walk around in the afternoon when you get home from work. Um, but certainly try activities like, uh, I mean, you can even do some sort of things like tracking and stuff with this and, you, you know, there is farm activities. I, if, he, if he ended up, the perfect life for this guy would be on a farm and to be used for what he's been bred for. Which is working. Which is working. Natalie Foster. Yes.
Nice to see you again. Thank you. Did you miss me? We've missed you terribly. <laughs> when you have a holiday, our hearts are broken. Oh, I love it. But it's lovely to have you back. And thank you so much for introducing us to Jared. <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Come and grab Jared. <laughs> Looks like he's grabbed you. I know. I love you. <laughs>